Welcome to Across Africa, our weekly look at stories from across the continent. I'm Georgia Calvin Smith, and this week, the clock is counting down towards DR Congo's general elections next month. President Ch Felix Chisikedi is pushing for a second term in a field of over 20 candidates, but only a few are considered front runners. Also, students are amongst the victims of Nigeria's rampant inflation. Some federal universities have been hit with a 300% increase in tuition fees. We take a closer look at how that is affecting students' prospects. Also, Nairobi hosted talks about plastic pollution around the world. Kenya wants to lead by example after legislation requiring producers to take responsibility for the waste they generate. But first, dozens of electoral observers headed out to DR Congo ahead of next month's general elections. Campaigning has officially kicked off. Felix Chisikedi is running for a second term in a field of over 20 contenders, but only about four are considered frontrunners. Clem Waller tells us more. They are over 20, all vying to become president of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Among the presidential hopefuls, four are presented as the main contenders, all with different objectives. First of all, the incumbent president, Félix Tshisekedi. At age 60, he is running for a second term. He is defending his record, underpinned by social measures such as free schooling and universal medical health care. But, according to his opponents, he has failed to achieve his objectives regarding the fight against corruption and improving the economy and national security. Then there is Martin Fayulu, the unsuccessful candidate of the 2018 presidential election. This former executive of an oil outlet is out for revenge. He and his supporters maintain he was the victor five years ago. Within a divided opposition, Fayulu is currently going it alone, having refused to form a common front with other opposition candidates at a conference in Pretoria last week. At 58, Moise Katumbi, former governor of Katanga, already has the support of three other candidates who have withdrawn from the race. Seth Kikuni, Frank Diongo, and former prime minister Matata Ponyo Mapon. All are calling on their supporters to vote for the leader of the Together for the Republic party. He is focusing his campaign on his record in Katanga, with the construction of roads and schools, as well as the development of agriculture. And finally, Dr. Dennis Mukwege, winner of the 2018 Nobel Peace Prize. Nicknamed the man who repairs women, he is based in eastern Congo, where armed militias have long carried out attacks on civilians. He is highly critical of the government and its inability to curb the conflict that is tearing the region apart. His watchwords in this campaign, peace and the fight against corruption. Cher Anta Diop University, Senegal's top higher education institution, has been closed since June when violent political protests rocked the country over the conviction of opposition leader Usman Sonko. The campus was evacuated because of security concerns, but students still haven't been back, and many are growing increasingly frustrated with the delay. Our team reports. Cher Anta Diop University, also known as UCAD, has been closed for more than five months leaving 80,000 students in limbo. The Dakar campus was shut down following an unprecedented period of political unrest in Senegal. Many students are desperate to return, including Al Yoon, a fifth-year medical student who is now questioning his future. I don't know if I'll have the strength to continue with my studies next year if I lose a whole year at university, because medicine is a really demanding course. I need to do eight or nine years of studies as well as a specialisation. If I lose a year, will I have the strength to go on? Will I be motivated enough? On June 1st, Senegalese opposition leader Ousmane Sonko was sentenced to two years in prison over a sex scandal. Some of his supporters subsequently ransacked the university, setting fire to buildings and buses. 2.7 million euros in damage was caused in one part of the campus alone. Five months on, much of this is still visible. University authorities say they are unwilling to take any risks by reopening the campus prematurely. For the moment, we cannot give an opening date. When there's a threat like this, you must take responsibility to ensure that it doesn't happen again. That is what the authorities have been working on since June 1st. The material damage is easy enough to fix, but we must look at the security risk. 
Lecturers are maintaining a distance learning policy for the rest of the 2022-23 academic year. A reopening date is expected to be announced before November 30th. Well, from students in Senegal to those in Nigeria who are also facing tough choices, but there because of mounting inflation. Tuition fees for some institutions have gone up by over 300 percent. Both undergraduates and new students are affected. And all this against a backdrop of the country's cost of living crisis. Some fear that they won't be able to afford to stay on for their studies. Our correspondents tell us more. Nigeria's economic crisis is ballooning the cost of education. Joshua Deyeye is one of the many public university students who now have to find new when ways of financing their studies after fees were tripled. Even when it was still 15,000 naira, some people could not still afford the fee. You know, students who are, you know, from pocket to mouth and from mouth to pocket, so they have to go all around to get, you know, even that 15,000 naira, a token of 15,000 naira. How much more when the fee is now about 80,000 naira plus? The costs have jumped further and faster than many expected. There are worries that millions of students may now feel pressure to spend fewer years in expensive higher education. I expected the increase in school fees, but I never expected it to be this much. I get the fact that um, the country is hard, everything is expensive, everything has doubled in prices. But as for school fees, it's kind of like tripled or even more than tripled for most of us. The increases mean students will have to pay the equivalent of 287 euros per semester instead of the usual 31 to 91 euros. The Lagos State University claims the changes are essential as the income from the old fees was barely enough to cover its electricity bills. But the school has tried to help students hit hard by the hike in course prices. Some can now earn extra money by coaching their peers. Even before now, we have all those provisions. What we have done is to make them better. We have what we call a work study, where a student could work for about 10 hours in a week and for 10 weeks, and we'll be earning around between 500 and 1,000 per hour, which will amount to around 100,000, between 50 and 100,000 per semester. Although the Nigerian government still funds education, more money is needed. UNESCO recommends that the state spends 15 to 20 percent of its budget on education, but in Nigeria, the current figure is less than 10 percent. More than 10 percent of babies born in South Africa suffer the effects of excessive drinking by their mother during her pregnancy. The country's rate of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is the highest in the world. Social workers are trying to do more to raise awareness of the risks amongst pregnant women most at risk of turning to alcohol, many of whom are already living harsh lives. Take a look. Letitia Lawrence is 27. She was diagnosed with the most severe form of fetal alcohol syndrome disorder, a term used to refer to birth defects caused by alcohol exposure during pregnancy. She works in a Cape Town factory where she labels products. I have to wake up and get ready, and then after that, I just brush my teeth, and then I'm ready, and then I'm here, and then I start working. It makes me happy and keeps me busy a lot, and yeah. Her employer believes in creating a shared workspace for people with disabilities. Wow, you look after those. Well, I believe that inclusion is the answer. I, I really think that we need to have a, a variety of people who work together, and people will see those with disability differently. Mothers don't need to be heavy drinkers to cause damage to their unborn baby. FASD is detected during early childhood and varies from mild to severe. So it's actually when the child goes into the toddler years that you can see the delay. The delay might be things like uh, fine motor development. That's what we mostly see in South Africa. In other countries, they're reporting gross motor development. We don't see that as much, but definitely delayed in speech and language. 30% of South African families are affected by FASD, the highest rate globally. 
At this year's 7th Global Alcohol Policy Conference in Cape Town, campaigners urged the government to strengthen policies on alcohol and substance abuse. For instance, if we have things like warning labels on um, liquor bottles or we have point of sale warnings which are in liquor serving establishments, it can give more information to the user and it can not only reduce alcohol use by somebody who may be pregnant, but also by community. Policies and knowledge about the effects of alcohol alone cannot stop a woman from drinking alcohol during pregnancy. Support from family and the community is equally important. A well, week-long UN negotiations in Nairobi closed out without much progress on international talks towards a hope for landmark treaty on plastic pollution. Although a draft for further negotiations was agreed, environmental campaigners say that the process was hijacked by oil-producing countries with an interest in undermining sustainability principles key to tackling the problem. Loja Bershteka has more. As if freshly risen from the ground, large plastic hills overlook the Nairobi skyline. In the giant Dandora landfill that borders the Kenyan capital, waste continues to pile up, despite the government's efforts to limit plastic consumption. Yet some measures are beginning to bear fruit. This dairy products factory recently modified its bottles to make them easier to recycle. In 2023, we've shifted our drink yogurt packaging our one liter fresh milk and two liter fresh milk to clear bottles and we've gotten very positive feedback from the recyclers. After a 2017 ban on single-use plastic bags largely fell flat, Kenyan authorities introduced new legislation in 2020 requiring producers to take responsibility for the waste that they generate. And while the measure hasn't been enough to fully curb plastic pollution, recyclers say mentalities are beginning to change. Clear, PET, um, you know, is a better devil to live with because we can easily be able to uh, fully recycle it and get it back, you know, into, uh, into the market. Having these producers take a bit of responsibility uh, gives us assurance that uh, we have got a job to go to. Earlier this week, government delegations gathered in Nairobi to discuss a landmark international treaty against plastic pollution. As they continue to hammer out the details, activists are calling for tangible commitments to reduce global plastic production by 75 percent over the next 20 years. Well, that's it for Across Africa for now. Thanks very much for joining us. Do so again if you can. Till then, take care.